Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and we have finally got the new Daily Login Reward Champion, Eric's, showing up in the game. So we can get a little bit better idea of how these things break down with the buff, debuff chances, and the books, and all that. And also, in my video yesterday talking about this new Legendary, I expected it to be uh, a little bit more positively received by the community, but it is not, and, and a lot of people think I was wrong in my assessment, so I will take a look at uh, some of that, and, and we'll talk about if I was wrong or right, if I've changed my opinion, and we'll do a deep dive. I'll try to get this champion uh, at least added onto the tier list to see where it grades out, and we'll just get you full context on this new daily login champion. Let's get into it. Alrighty, so first of all, very important for us to get some context here as to what is going on because sometimes on the infographic, we don't get a lot of the pertinent information that we need in order to come to accurate conclusions. So um, is this mostly what I thought? Um, this is a little bit underwhelming. I was hoping this would get up to 40%. I was hoping we would get a 5 and a 10 to bring it up to 40%. So, a uh, 35% chance of removing one random buff. It's still a good ability. Uh, that's just a little bit disappointing that it, that it didn't get to 40. Um, we've got an AoE, books to a 3 turn cooldown, and then this goes from 50 to 75. All of that is exactly what I expected in yesterday's video, so that doesn't really change. And then this does book to a three turn cooldown. So I did say that this was going to be a big deal if this books to a four or a three. So very encouraging that this does get that second book on a cooldown to uh, to go to a good rotation of one, three, three on the abilities because we've got the A2 on a three turn cooldown and the A3 on a three turn cooldown. I love champions like that where you get the one, three, three, nice rotation of the abilities and getting them back very often. Then for the passive, uh, nothing is really going to change here. There was going to be no books or or, or stuff like that involved so i would say all in all this ended up uh decently encouraging so far but it is unfortunate the a1 did not book up to 40 percent it's just going to be 35 instead and then we can also see the base stats down on the bottom right and um this isn't encouraging or discouraging um we do get the good version of crit damage this is typically going to be either 50 or 63 um and then a base of 45 accuracy and resistance combined is all right it's not bad i uh, i would have liked to see 50 or 60 but it's not the worst that you that you're going to see in game um speed of 99 is a little bit power creep a little bit low for a legendary uh but not terrible it's not like 93 or something and uh the attack completely irrelevant the hp and defense is okay uh a, a decently sturdy champion i, I would have liked to see maybe 23,500 or something for the hp but all in all uh, the base stats are mostly what we should have expected and I also did a poll on the uh, on the YouTube channel to, to try to get an idea of what you, the viewer, are, are thinking uh, when it relates to this new login champion. It looks like uh, very few of you really like it. We're not getting a whole lot of S and A. Uh, only about one out of every five of you think that it is a really good champion. Most of you uh, falling into that B or C category where it's like, meh, it's all right. It could be useful in some circumstances, but I'm not too excited about it. And then about one out of five of you uh, really hate the champion and think it is a complete trash can F tier. Now, the way that I kind of thought this would break down if I break out the pen here was I would have guessed somewhere around here on the S. I would have thought the A was like right here. And I would have thought the B would be kind of right there with it, uh, right here. And then um, F uh, a, a lot less. I, I don't think it's quite an F. I mean, it does remove buffs and then the C a little bit less. So that's kind of how I thought it would play out. I, I thought you'd really see the A and the B be the most common answers, but that is not how it shook out. Let me clear that. It ended up being B and C. Uh, so the community coming in a lot worse than I thought they would. So now before I give you my final assessment on uh, you know, how wrong my opinion was and all of that, let's try to get it plugged into the algorithm to see how the tier list spits it out in terms of a, an overall context. So we have got Eryx right here, and the faction is Night Rev, Magic Affinity, or oh wait, sorry, uh, Legendary and Magic. Book value, um, so we've got four uh, plus five is nine, plus two is 11. Um, and we'll kind of have to wait until that. I'm going to start it at like a six. Um, Demon Lord is the normal clan boss. Uh, going to be really 
really bad. We do get ally protection and self counterattack, but really uh, nothing special besides that. The arena, you do get the buff strip, ally protection could be decent on like your earlier uh, tag team arena type teams, maybe like a six. Um, XP farm, you do have the AoE A1. I don't anticipate it hitting super hard. It does have CC and self buff, so it could be like an eight. Um, not going to be like a speed farmer, but could definitely do it. Um, and, and that doesn't grade out very hard. It's worth like 1% on the, uh, the algorithm. Faction Wars, Night Rev um, does place some buffs which can be really rough on auto um but the aoe and suppression um and, and buff strip could be nice uh yeah you know, i'd say like an eight or a nine you just got to be careful uh with the uh with the boss obviously a manual that's one of the harder bosses that the night revenant has with the uh, mere universe ability that that switches everything around um the doom tower I mean, like an eight, just general utility. Same with the Hydra, uh, kind of general. Uh, the Dragon, we don't get uh, any defense break or anything. The ally protection's all right. Maybe like again, like an eight, like usable. Spider, uh, like uh, like a six, maybe. Fire Knight, really not going to be very good there at all. Uh, yeah, not going to. It might even be like a three, honestly. There's no multi hitters um, or anything like that. Uh, well, what exactly was the passive? Fill this chip. Each time inflicts critical heal a champion. Uh, okay, so that's not bad for like the Hydra or something. Um, Ice Golem does scale with HP, which is nice, and ally protection. So honestly, that could be like a 9 or a 10. I'll, I'll give it a 10. Pretty solid uh, choice for the Ice Golem. Minotaur, not going to be uh, super good there. Uh, and then the Void Keep and some of these keeps. Really not a whole lot of special mechanics. Uh, let me scroll over so I can finish grading here. And boom. So for the Void Keep... Uh, nothing. Most of this stuff is like a five. Uh, spirit keep, strong affinity, but not bringing much. Magic keep, four. Force keep, like a three. Weak affinity and all that. Arcane keep does self buff uh, and help you get to the waves and stuff. So decent um, of like an eight, but not going to be anything super incredible. So uh, ends up grading out as an overall of 6.1, which is honestly atrocious that's really bad um <laughs> uh maybe the book value is that a little bit low i mean you do get faction wars uh so uh, yeah i could bump up like the book value to a seven because it does help with faction wars but still graded out pretty bad let me get this uh sorted and see where it ended up let's search for eric's so all right the tier list spit it out uh kind of down there around like robar and arrow and crypt curing and uh, okay yeah so uh, all right I, I think i was a little bit wrong uh you, I, I, like uh, so what happens is i'm grading this in the context of it's a free champion so i'm grading it um on that sliding scale uh, and i'm grading it way less harsh because uh, i'm kind of thinking in my head like this is a free champion that everyone's going to get eventually um so you really gotta it's not going to be duchess or siffy you know um it's a login champion uh but then a good friend of mine uh, uh mad capper last night when we were talking in discord made the uh, made the point like uh you know why couldn't they have a champion similar to Scylla the drakes a champion that's not like broken in the arena or anything but is obviously very good and, uh, you know, yeah, I get that perspective. So I do think it is a little bit underwhelming now that I, I see it in game and I plug it into your list and, and I'm not doing like a first reaction and I see uh, some, some of the opinions of other people. I would tend to agree with the audience. I would do like a B, B minus. Um, you know, yesterday I was more thinking like that A minus or so, uh, just because I, I, I love a buff strip on abilities. And when you have a default AOE, that kind of got me excited. And then the passive uh, kind of looks pretty cool because you're getting that really consistent and predictable value um i do really like the rotation of the abilities uh the but the thing is is, is this is really like a progression champion and uh and you're not going to get it until a long time down the road so by the time you get this champion you're probably going to be like maybe using it in your third hydra team something like that um and you're not really going to need I, I mean i you know by the time you get this champion i, I guess you could still need to finish night rev faction wars but uh but it's not like going to be super ridiculous game changer there or anything like still the drakes is uh, like if you haven't finished the barbarians faction wars by the time you get still the drakes obviously still the drakes knocks that out of the park and and just like doubles how good your your barbarians faction wars team is so i do get that and, and I, I think this champion could use a little bit of love just to bring it up uh into being a little bit more hyped up and I don't really like to complain about something without giving a solution. So uh, it, how I would change this champion, I would definitely uh, up the chance of the A1. I think 
Um, you know, I maybe give this because we've seen like Scartorsis have an ability like this, and it seems really good on paper. It just doesn't end up getting used or being near as uh, as consistent value as you would think. I would definitely bump this percent chance up. I would probably make the two books. I would probably make a book of 10 and 15, honestly. Uh, get it up to get it up to 35 and then 50. Uh, to make the books more impactful, that would bump up the book value of the champion. And then the A1 would be a lot more reliable and a lot better if it was 50% instead of 35. I think people would be a lot more excited about that. And it's not like it would be some broken OP ability because it's not removing all buffs from the target. And it's not even predictable. It's just one random buff. So I think a 50% chance on an AoE would be perfectly fine. Um, the A2... Uh, transfers a random debuff from this champion to the targets that receive a stun. Um, I would maybe change that a little bit to be more guaranteed value because you're not getting a 100% stun. If it was a 100% stun, I would be okay with this. Since it's a 75, I would maybe add some other utility to that instead of just transfer a random debuff. Uh, maybe like transfer one random debuff from each ally onto each enemy that, rec that that receives a stun. That'd be a little bit better and be kind of cool. Um, as far as the A3, why not give this AoE counterattack? We don't we don't have a whole lot of counterattack in the game. It'd be really cool to get that as a login champion. We've only got Valkyrie, Martyr, and Skullcrusher. Um, and even Skullcrusher's counterattack uh, as a champion has been kind of power creeped a little bit. Why not just make this uh, place ally protection buff on all allies except this champion and a counterattack buff on all allies for two turns? Why not? Uh, I, I don't think that would be broken or ridiculous, and uh, I think then people would be a lot more excited about this champion. Uh, the passive I mostly like. Uh, wouldn't really need to change this a whole lot. Heal this champion by 5%, and it's an ally protector, so that's mostly pretty cool. Uh, maybe up that to like 7 or 8%, uh, maybe even 10 I don't know. You'd have to kind of play around with the numbers on how it balances out, but I think some of those changes would bring uh, would bring the champion way up the tier list from like a 6.1 to like an 8 point something, and uh, bring it up into that A tier instead of the, the B minus tier that a lot of the viewers are thinking, but uh, let me know what you think down below. Uh, what do you think about my ideas are they good are they bad and uh and kind of your general sentiment around this champion and if you agree with the viewers poll and all that really enjoy your perspectives so i can uh formulate resources that are more and more accurate over time but uh as always uh thank you for watching have a good rest of your day peace